What what are three takeaway kind of things that you learned that you can pass on to the viewers from the making of the film? I'm thinking about production stuff now. That as a first time filmmaker, as a, a, a zoologist turned producer actress, what what are the you know the three interesting things that you learned? Gosh. Well, I mean, I learned so much. I mean, every sort of step of the journey, I, I learned something really because I had done t a couple of short films beforehand, but nothing like this. Um, one thing I, I've sort of learned, I suppose, is really, I mean, it is, it's like everyone kind of knows, but the planning of everything because, um, because I was kind of a one man ship, sort of, or whatever. You know, I was just the, the only person involved most of the time, apart from at shoots when people would turn up. Um, but, um, Having a core group of people around you, like a good first AD who's there the whole time and DOPs and stuff. Well, we didn't have a DOP. We just had camera ops who came in and out, you know, of each shoot. And, and we had uh, ADs, but they'd come for each day because it was sort of so hard to get people sort of for the whole time. Or I just didn't organize it. And all of a sudden it was like, God, we've got, got to shoot. I need some people to help, you know. So I think planning and, and having some people who can really sort of fall back on and stuff because I was trying to do too many things I think that was right. my biggest problem that I and, was trying to do everything let's have another one then something else that you learned oh gosh um, something else I when, learned when you make the next film you go I'm not going to do that uh, well um, having somewhere to put your actors when it's minus five and you're doing a night shoot right that's kind of maybe a useful thing to right. think that's about that's interesting because jan dunn on on one of our first shows she talked about that how it's really important to have a space for actors to kind of be not in that kind of lovey fluffy kind of ooh, i'm an actress but more of that I, you know i've got to get into character i've got to stay in that place I'm not going to be distracted yeah and, it was very hard. I mean, we were lucky in the fact that we were using this, this Anglo-Saxon village. And so we used to, we often had those huts and we sometimes had a marquee on one of the shoots and we sometimes had interior areas. But, but during the night shoot, it, we had nothing. We had, we did actually light a fire in one of the huts and people were ferried back and forth to <laughs> keep warm and then back out into minus five, you know, to do this night shoot. But that was, that was definitely hard work. I mean, trying to do makeup outside and one makeup artist trying to wig up everyone and, it's quite amazing when I sort of think about those sort of things that I've sometimes forgotten, and then I watch yeah. them behind the scenes, and then you and you think, gosh, what? And, and so that scene in particular is one of the nicest scenes, you know, it's yeah. the, the funeral scene, and, and you sort of forget that we were all freezing our butts yeah, yeah. off in minus five, but actually it looks beautiful. Yeah. So, so what what is one enduring thing, one really amazing outcome from the film that, that you've experienced? What was, what was the high point? Um, well, I think... Generally, the high point is is the fact that it's finished and done, and so many people got involved and got behind it. I think generally, I mean, it's quite a, it's not sort of a point, but generally that the fact that we finished it and so many people like it, so many people have watched it, that's just generally quite a high point because you don't want to put all this effort and years sure. in and then no one actually pays which attention is, to which it. Which is really the outcome for a lot of independent filmmakers because yeah. you, you, you go to a distributor and you have to get your money back, you end up doing this deal. Instead, you could just give the thing away for free. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the frustrating thing is that we'd love to be giving out DVDs and stuff and things like that. We can't, you know, mm. we can't even make T-shirts and things. Right. But... Um, but the fact that people are out there watching it and, and just stuff, just so. to be clear, that's because of the Tolkien estate and, and it's, you're effectively... It's Tolkien Enterprises. There's right. so many people involved, it's quite confusing. But we basically, the lawyers got in touch with us while we were filming at one point because they saw what we were doing and saw how professional looking it was. <laughs> and kind of went, okay, you can keep going, but here's a list of rules so yeah, that you yeah. don't, you know, cross the line kind of thing. Just because it wasn't the average fan film, it wasn't a couple of... Uh, kids in their back garden running around. Yeah. I mean, this was professional. It wasn't looking be kind thing. rewind. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but you know, we have an understanding with them, and it's fine as long as we don't make money. It's absolutely fine. But I think generally, just contacts that I've made, I suppose the friends that we've made, and hopefully all the other guys have made and and stuff. Um, yeah. Amazing, great things, right. and hopefully we can take them on to the so, next project. So um, I'm hoping you know you're going to be able to tell us some amazing, great things because we we bumped into each other in Cannes last week, and and so you're in Cannes with your movie. Yeah. Tell us something fantastic that happened. Um, well, after our movie, we ended up on Al Pacino's yacht, 
So that was <laughs> right. that was quite interesting. Basically, um, we were lucky enough that our that just before our film was a ten minute short film, but it was by Julie Pacino, uh, who's the daughter of Al Pacino, and so she obviously came to watch her film, and we all came to watch, and they stayed and watched ours, and they invited us to their sort of party afterwards, and so. Um, so me and Christopher Dane ended up on this this yacht, um, sort of going, gosh, this this is the life. But <laughs> totally, to this. yeah, it's very. But it's like like you guys were saying last in the last week's show. You know, it's very strange. You know, in Cannes, and, um, but it was that was quite interesting. And meeting, we 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 sort of um, we met his lawyer, who's uh, who loved the the film. So he's a good contact. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just I mean. Because I, I heard rumours from one of your actresses who oh, yeah. I bumped into that, that maybe some deal was going down, or is that just <laughs> can hyperbole? Well, um, there's basic one, uh, there is a distributor who got in touch, uh, who came and saw some of the film. He obviously was doing the whole screen hopping thing. And it was from, um, I think it's, oh, now I'm going to get it wrong, but I think it's David from Guerrilla Films. Yeah. And... Um, and he he loved it and want you know wanted to distribute it and then realised he couldn't and then apparently because he was sort of he came out of the film was talking to Chris while um, the film was still going on he kept going away and coming back going away coming back going there's something in this there's something in this um, so I think he was interested in doing behind the scenes but yeah. I don't uh, so I'm going to chat with him about yeah. it I don't know whether we can lawyer wise yeah but um, but it's great that he's so interested yeah. and it shows that if he's interested in that you know. Hopefully, yeah. be interesting. And in the David, next project. David is a great guy. We've had him on the show already. I've yeah. known him 15, 20 years, and he's the only distributor I would recommend wholeheartedly in the UK because he actually has in the past sent me checks. So, you know, he does <laughs> so deal, and the money works. actually turns up. <laughs> That's so good to know. That, yeah, everything else is gravy. Yeah. Um, 